Hey friends, it's Len down at 1A Auto. Today we're gonna to be working on a 2016 Ram 1500 with the Hemi. We're gonna be doing a radiator. It's gonna be a fairly simple job. I wanna be the guy that shows you how to do it. So if you need this part or any other part, you can always check into 1A Auto. Right. So we've Thanks. unboxed our radiator quality 1A Auto part. What we wanna do first is we wanna compare it to the one that's inside the vehicle. Just kinda of like a preliminary check, essentially. Um, just to make sure that everything kind of lines up where it should be. Once we get the old one out, we'll do a much closer up check, make sure everything's exactly the way it should be. But basically, we just want to kind of make sure that we're dealing with the right part before we start tearing everything apart. And then you're down a vehicle without a ride to go get your new part. So here we go. We'll just take note of where everything is. We got a lower hose. We got the upper hose right here. This is where they're gonna go into. We've got the petcock, this is where we're gonna drain. So when we go to drain the radiator, we're gonna pop open the radiator cap, which would be here or up there on the truck. And then we're gonna twist this to the left and it should let fluid out. Once that's drained, we can go ahead and replace it. But we're just gonna take note of where the clips are for the fan shroud. Good. Some there, some there. You also wanna double check your part, make sure there's no crimps or cracks or you know mangled fins. If when you're installing this and you're gripping onto it, you mess up these fins, you're gonna cause an issue. So let's try not to mess up those fins. We can take a peek at the backside. We're gonna do the same thing. Looks pretty good. A couple of bent fins, but that's really not a big deal. It's just if you get a lot of it, like if I just wrote my name all over there, Len. Um, anyways, so this looks pretty good. So like I said, we wanna just kinda of take a look at this and then take a look at the one in the vehicle and make sure everything lines up. So we know we got the radiator fill cap over here, yep. The lower hose should be down at the bottom there. Looks like it is. We got the fan shroud mounting pieces. Okay. Yeah, those look good. We can come on over to the other side. We got the upper hose area. We remember that that was over here. The petcock should be down there, and it is. Well, it looks pretty good to me. We could measure it up if you want to grab a measuring tape, just to double check. But uh, I already held it up there and I made sure that it kind of matched up. If you wanted to do that, it's pretty simple. Just take it, super heavy, Ugh, just kidding, very light. We'll go like this, like that. Looks pretty good. All right, so we're clear to start installing this. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this radiator cap. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and cool. You haven't just been driving the truck around and it's super hot. It's very cool. It could still be under pressure, so make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. Safety is the number one concern, 1A Auto. General rule of life as well, right? You can push down while you're turning to the left. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do it away from my face just in case there is pressure. You don't wanna go like this, put your face over it. <laughs> we can inspect our cap. Make sure that the seals and the gaskets and all that stuff isn't cracked or dry rotted or swollen. Looks pretty decent. General rule of thumb is you'd wanna replace the radiator cap at the same time as the radiator. If you don't have the money or you don't have the radiator cap, well, this one looks like it's perfectly reusable. I don't see a reason why you wouldn't be able to. You could also take a look, see along here. If you see any green or red or uh, sometimes you'll get a lot of white, this could be vaping. So basically what happens is, is when this squishes down like that, it's supposed to do that. So it lets the fluid, when the fluid in your radiator expands, comes up through here and it goes into your fluid reservoir, that's supposed to do that. But after a while, what happens is, is this breaks down in here, there's a little gasket, and then it'll start seeping through there, or you might get seeping along here, and you'll notice white all along the bottom of your radiator right here, or the bottom of the, uh, the area where your radiator screws onto. If you see white there, you definitely have a bad seal and you'd want to replace the radiator cap. So now we're clear to, we've got this off, we're gonna bring the vehicle up in the air or get under it, whatever your preference is. And we're gonna relieve pressure from the, um, from the petcock down there. We're gonna make sure it goes into a catch bucket. We don't want it going into the ground. Make sure you save the environment, recycle things properly. So let's move along. So this right here is the petcock. We can use an 18 millimeter socket on that and turn it to the left. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we have our catch bucket ready to catch this coolant. It's gonna come down, it could deflect off of here, so make sure you have your face out of the way. Make sure you have a proper collection receptacle, something that you can recycle it with. Make sure it's disposed of properly. So yeah, we'll just go ahead with our 18 millimeter socket and our collection bucket. 
Let's see how this works. As you go, it's gonna wanna pull out. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Here we go. Here we are. We're just gonna let it finish doing that. Once it comes to a trickle, or even better, when it's completely done, we'll continue. All right, so we've still got this draining. We've got our safety glasses on all the time when we're under here. We're gonna remove a couple clips. We've got one here, there, and there. Well, it's three, so I guess it's more like a few, right? It's not a couple. Anyways, so we'll remove those few clips. Right over here, this is your lower radiator hose where it goes onto the radiator. There's a metal clamp. You can use a couple different tools there. Um, you could use something like these. Or you can use a tool that's made for it. Something like these. This is a nice tool. And what this is gonna do is it'll squeeze that clamp, the two clips. Let's see if there's a good way for you to see it. You see the clamp up there, it's metal. It's got two little clips on it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze those two pieces together and then we can hopefully wiggle that hose around, break it free from the radiator. This is of course once all the fluid's drained out of it. We don't want any of that getting onto the ground. It's very poisonous. So we'll just wait on that. But what we can do is we can remove those clips. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm go with this clip. Just try to pull that off. It's just a little clip and it pushes into that hole. If it happens to come out, you just put it someplace where you won't lose it. We're gonna do the same thing for the other two. Moving down the line. If it seems like it doesn't wanna come out, you could also use a pair of cutters and just try to grab onto it without actually physically cutting it. Something like these. Basically, I use these so I can get under it, and then I just kinda pull it. You'll notice I didn't cut it. It's not in the best condition, but it's totally reusable. We'll put it aside where we can find it. We're moving over towards where the cool one's coming down, so watch your eyes and your mouth. If you don't have to talk because you're doing a YouTube video, it's best to keep your mouth shut. There we are. Perfect. So now once this is done, we'll go ahead and remove this hose right here and we'll be clear to bring the vehicle down to a working level. We can reach everything from the top and we'll continue. So now we got just a light trickle. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. As I turn to the right, you're gonna notice that it sucks itself in. You don't have to grip it and rip it and really grab onto it and just give it a little tweak. It should close off. We'll get all this cleaned down a little bit. So now we can remove our bucket from this side and we'll bring it over here to where the lower hose is gonna come off. So now we're gonna get in here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wheel well. I'm gonna try to pull it back. See if I can get a clear view under there. However you can do to make it stay up. You can even just hold it by your arm if you want. But essentially we just kinda of want it to stay up. Make sure we're wearing safety glasses in case it comes snapping down. We're gonna take this clamp and like I said, we're gonna pinch it down. Once we pinch it, we're gonna grab this hose, try to wiggle it around, break it free. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool that I had mentioned before. Put it over both ears. One thing I like about this tool is it has little locks. So once you get it squeezed to where you want it, it's locked in. So then you can just kind of wiggle it around. There we go. I've got my collection bucket, so it's ready to catch whatever's gonna happen. I'm gonna move my flashlight. Gonna wiggle this. There we go. Got our little clamp. We're gonna keep this. You can either replace it with a new clamp, or if this one's still in good condition, like this one seems like it is, we could reuse it. Sometimes you'll find them, they'll be very rusted and rotted, and you can almost squeeze them by hand quite a bit. This one, I mean, I'm no Hercules, but. It seems like it's still pretty strong. I would say it's reusable. We'll just put this someplace where we can find it. We've got the hose off. We're gonna let that finish trickling down. So we're up top. Now we're just gonna do a little assessment and see what we have to do. We have a fan shroud right here. Underneath there, there's gonna be a, a fan that's connected to your engine. Um, hopefully we're not gonna have to remove that, but once we get to that point, we'll assess that. But we wanted, what we wanna do is we wanna see what we're gonna have to start taking apart to get this fan shroud out of the way. So down here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds on these lines. 
to the radiator itself. So we'll be removing that. Over here, there's a 13 millimeter head. We're gonna remove that. We'll come across. There's a little clip right here. We wanna make sure that we can get this hose off of here. So we're gonna be removing this upper hose from the radiator, moving it out of the way. And then once we get on this side, we're gonna have another 13 over here. It looks like there's a wiring harness. And that's pretty much it. So this all should come off pretty easily, assuming that this fan shroud can get far enough out of the way with the fan there. And we're gonna take this off right here. Hopefully we can move that radiator around quite a bit to be able to get it out. So I've got a couple tools here, basic tools. We're gonna to need this or our uh, cutters. And we're gonna to try to remove these little push pins. There's one here, they come along. We'll find them all as we go. But basically I wanna to try to get underneath the push pin best I can here with both of the ears if I can. Watch as it messes with me, it's okay. Be careful with that screwdriver. Once I get it up a little bit, I can go ahead and use my cutters, grab onto it without cutting it. Let's see if I can slide this under here. I just wanna grab onto it with these. I'm gonna try to twist and pull. There we are. Now we can lift as we go. We see that there's another one right here holding it in. You can try to get under it. Once again, doesn't feel like it's gonna to wanna to come up. I'll try going this way. There we are. Flashlight out of the way. Moving along, we can keep lifting to see where everything's getting held down. See if we can get under it. There we are. Keep coming along. We're just gonna basically grab all these out of here so we can get this plastic piece up and out of the way. Now we've removed this. So now we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this thing lifted up. We can use our little tool again. See if we can get under there. Just gonna basically try to get the clips up off of the shroud. Spin it around so you can see. Just a couple little push clips, they push into there. If you wanted to, you could try to take a small screwdriver and see if you can get under there. If you can make magic happen, make it happen. I'm gonna move along. I'm gonna take off this upper hose right here. I'm gonna use the same tool I used before. You can also use pliers, as I mentioned before, or even your fingers if you're Hercules. I'm not. Let's get it on there. Squeeze that puppy. I'm just gonna take the hose. Now I can really pressure with my tool. Get this right out of our way. Make sure you don't put it in a spot that it can come slapping back up into your face. Now we can continue our assessment of what we're gonna have to take off over here, and then we'll go ahead over to the other side. So now we're gonna take a 13 millimeter. We're gonna take out this fan shroud bolt. This just holds the upper portion of the shroud in. We're gonna do the same on the other side of the vehicle once this is out. The bottom area for mounting should just be a little slip-in area, so there's no bolts to remove there. There's what it looks like. We can set that someplace where we won't lose it. So we have a little wiring harness over here. Got a connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little tool. I'm gonna try to pop it off. There it is. Next, I'm gonna try to grab onto this. There's a little squeeze tab right here. I'm gonna try to squeeze down on that. If you can't, you can try to use a little pocket screwdriver or whatever you have access to. Just get it in between there. Should break free. Take a peek in there while we got it apart. Make sure there's no funny colors, greens, purples, reds, blues. Looks nice and clean. We don't have to worry about that. Now we can try to wiggle this fan shroud around. Nice. So there's one more clip under here, which holds in the, um, the fan shroud, the inner fan shroud, I guess you would say, for the electric fans. Basically, you want to take a small screwdriver, if you happen to have one or whatever you have. Try to get it in and under here. Pull that clip out. Looks something like that. Set it aside where you can find it again, because we're going to need it to reinstall. Should 
be able to grab it. See if we can move it around a little bit. All right, let's go back up top. So now that we got that lower clip out, we're gonna come up here, get a little squeezy tab. Just push that towards the radiator. Carefully lift up, break that free. Come over to the other side, do the same thing. Squeeze your little tab, lift up, drop it back down into the hole again, and do it all over again. <laughs> this time hold it up. Let's see if I can do it. I'm trying not to let it fall back down, so this time, of course, it's gonna give me a hassle. There we go. I'm just gonna pull that away. Try to slide it into this fan shroud a little bit more so we have some room. If you're lucky enough to have a wrench like this, it's a ratchet wrench, find them anywhere. I'm gonna try to remove this 12 millimeter head down here. There's a bolt that holds the AC condenser to the radiator. There's a bracket. I wanna try to get this removed. So I'm gonna try to get my fingers in here somehow, magically, there we are. I'm gonna turn it to the left. If you're using a regular wrench, good luck. You might even be able to get in with a ratchet of some sort. I'm just gonna go with this ratchet wrench. I'm gonna remove this completely, and then I'm gonna move up to the top up there, remove that 12. So I've got one bolt out. This one's almost all the way out. Let's see if I can get it without dropping it. Almost, there it is. Match them up, they look the same. We don't have to worry about mixing them up. Put them aside where we can find them. Now we're gonna go ahead with those 10 millimeters. Like I said, there's one there, one there, one there, one there. And then we'll go ahead and check the other side. Should be a couple more tens over there. All right, so I got that second bolt almost all the way out. At this point, the bracket's gonna come loose. So you're gonna wanna make sure that if it does fall, you can find it. See if we can get it out. Show you what it looks like. There we are. So there's our two 10 millimeters and then our 12 millimeter head. If you're worried about forgetting somehow, it's pretty easy to remember. It's small hole, small hole, big hole. So here we go. I got the last bolt almost all the way out. I'm gonna hold on to my bracket because it's gonna be ready to fall right out. There it is. Here's my upper bracket. Looks about the same as the lower. I wouldn't say we have to worry too much about matching it up, but if you were worried about it, you can just set it however you want. You can put your lower one here, your upper one there, so you can remember whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna keep everything aside where I can find it. I got my four bolts there. I got my two bigger bolts. So now we're gonna come over to this side. We got a couple more 10 millimeters. Got our last 10 millimeters coming out. I'm holding onto the bracket. This one's gonna come out a little differently. It slides into the radiator, so hopefully we can get it. That's what it looks like. We got our 10 millimeter bolts. Matches up with the other ones over there, but we'll keep it over here. Let's give this a little wiggle. There we go. We'll just come over this way. We can take a peek, see if it's still attached anywhere. It might just be the lines kind of holding it tight. Looks like maybe one more. Maybe if we loosen up this 10 millimeter slash take it out, this should all come free. So let's try that. So we have a couple more 10 millimeter heads we're gonna remove. We've got this one right here. You can see with my little screwdriver pointing at it hopefully for you. That one. And then there's one right here. So we'll remove those two and we'll move on from there. So I've got this bolt almost all the way out. I'm turning it to the left, of course. Feels like it's pretty loose. Let's see if I can grab it with my fingers. And I could if I could reach it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna continue with my socket, 10 millimeter. Okay, try not to drop it. Nice and long one. Set that aside where we can find it. Now we're gonna move on to our next 10 millimeter head bolt right there. I'm gonna go back to my wrench. I'm gonna give that a try. Turning it to the left counterclockwise. Let's see if this moves around now. Oh yeah. That's much better. So now this isn't connected to our radiator anymore. Now that we're not worried about that, we can move on to the next step. So now what we should have left to remove is our radiator anchor bolts right here. There's one here, one over there. Should be a 13 millimeter socket. You can try to use a wrench or whatever you have access to. We're just gonna turn it to the left. If you had an extension to bring it out here, that would probably be helpful. I'm gonna grab one. So we'll get this right out of the way. Just give it a little twist and tug some place where we can find it. We don't want to leave it off. That's for the overflow. We're going to continue with this bolt, turning it to the left. Let's see. There it is. 13 millimeter. Ooh. Let's put that aside where we can find it. Move over and do the same to the other side. It's almost out. There we are. It's about the same as the other side. And put it where we can't lose it. 
radiator should move around. Come to the center here. We'll see about lifting it. See if there's anything jamming it up. If we look down here, there's some wiring harnesses. We're gonna wanna be very careful when we're lifting up on the radiator not to tug on anything there. So we got this moving around. We'll notice that it's holding onto this right here. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our condenser. We're gonna pull it a little bit towards the passenger side of the vehicle. There's a little ear on the condenser that slides into the bottom of the radiator. I'll show you the slot once I get this out. It's just gonna, you're gonna have to wiggle it around, see if you can get it by all this wonderful stuff they put there for you. If it seems like it's getting stuck, just check to see what it keeps getting stuck on, okay? You don't wanna keep tugging if it's stuck on something. It might be wiring, might be hoses. There's also coolant coming out, so I'll just keep it tilted like this for a couple minutes here. Let it finish running out, and we'll move on. So we're gonna continue trying to lift now that I get the majority of that coolant out. Just paying attention to everything that's lifting with me. Make sure I don't have any AC lines stuck on anything. I'm gonna try to come over here. There we are. Just takes a little bit of finagling. Come on, baby. Almost there. Now we've removed our radiator. We have our old radiator. We just took it out of a 2016 Dodge Ram. We've got our new radiator, quality from 1A Auto. We like to do a little comparison, show you how everything compares. So as you can tell, this lines up with where that's supposed to be. Get this rear here. Looks good. Got the upper hose where it's supposed to line up. We get all the little clips right here. And it comes with a little baggie of hardware for you. So that's always important. You wanna make sure you replace anything you can, right? Lastly, we'll just bring it over here. I'll show you that it lines up that way. So if you had one that this side we'll say is lined up, right? And then we come over to this side, and it's all the way the heck over there. And we probably got the wrong part, don't we? So you always wanna compare it. Make sure you get it lined up and go like this. Looks like it sits over it fairly nice. So I'd say we're clear to install this quality 1A auto part. So you'll notice our old radiator, when we took it off, it still has these bushings in here. We're gonna wanna remove these and put them into our new one. So assuming these are in good condition after we get them off, we're gonna put them into our new one, I should say. I'm just gonna see if I can get my little small screwdriver in here, try to pry it out. If it doesn't want to, we could probably try to use a little bit of penetrant and we'll try it again. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can get this popped out. There's one, that's what it looks like. It's got a little groove, slides into there, just like that. So we'll do this into our new radiator. Put that aside. Do the same thing for this side. Oh, look at that. I used a little bit of penetrant. Practically fell right out. We'll check it. Doesn't look swollen, cracked, broken. Looks good. See the groove? Slides in there. Easy peasy. We'll set this aside. So you'll notice there's two different sides to these. There's this side with the flat. There's this side without the flat. We're gonna go ahead and put the flat side against the body. So this would be where it would mount up against the body. Slide that in, come over here. Do the same thing on this one, just like that. So we got our little box of goodies. Can't go wrong, right? We get these little clips. We have to remember which way we brought the bolts through. So when we were removing those bolts, we came through from this side. So this clip is gonna go right here. You can remember because it's right next to this. We're gonna do the next clip. Let's see if we can find where it goes real quick. Why wouldn't we have one for each side, right? There we go, our bolt's gonna come through from this direction, so we want the nut side to be on there. This leaves us these two little squares. You got a little slot right here, and a slot right there. So we're gonna take these squares, just push them in. The next little square. Push that in. We got our squares, we got our clips. So I've got my radiator in my hand. I'm gonna try to come in between the condenser and these two fan shrouds. 
you need to be very careful because it's gonna want to fight you going all the way down but anywhere you can see that could t cut into any of these little panels you're gonna want to be very careful as we're going down pay special attention to every place that could cut into all these little panels this is for your air to go through you start peening those over you're slowing down air going through your radiator and it's not doing what it should be So I'm gonna see if I can get this down Gonna finagle it a little bit this way, a little bit this way. You have to do whatever works for you on your side there. I'm just kind of showing you the basics of how this has got to go. I'm just pulling this condenser a little bit out of my way. I can try to maneuver this around a little bit. Remember we have those ears to catch these on the, let's see, I'll show you on this side. We've got the ears here to catch these, so if you can't get tie that, you're gonna have to just kind of work it around a little bit. Next, we're gonna have this big piece. It's gotta get past these lines, so we're gonna have to kind of try to twist this and push it. We might have to come at an angle. If that's the case, just figure it out. Okay, feels like it's starting to wanna go down a little bit. There we are. If you're like me, you're gonna to wanna to just shove it as hard as you can, get it over with, but we're not gonna do that today. Let's just do it right. We'll do it once. Get it set down in there. Get this side set down into its hole. Feels like that should be lined up. So we have a couple little rubbers right here. This is where the radiator will mount down into the body. So what I wanna do is I wanna to try to remove that should just pop off. We might have to use a little screwdriver of some sort, in which case I'll have to go get one. Here we are. As you can tell, it's a little moon. Come over to this side. We're gonna do the same thing. There we are. Throw it on the ground. Another little half moon. So down here, we have a little hole. And on the radiator itself, there's a shaft coming out. Basically, this part right here, it's gonna fit into the hole in the body. This part right here is gonna be where the radiator slides down into. We'll notice there's a half moon, like I said before. The flat end of it goes towards the front end of the vehicle. So we can go ahead and either put this onto the radiator first and then drop it in the hole, or we can put this in the hole and then drop the radiator in. It's up to you. You do you, boo-boo. I'm gonna lift this up. The hole. I'm not going to worry about forcing that in yet because I'm going to do the other side. So now I got both those rubbers in. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can finagle this, get it to settle in. Get that side. Take a look. Looks like it's pretty close. Try to get my hand in there. There we are. Okay. While it's still able to move around, we don't need to worry about forcing it all completely in yet. So we can go ahead and get the rest of this mounted up at the same time. It might just pop back out of those rubbers and that's okay. We're not too worried about it because we can put them back in nice and easy. So I'm gonna grab this, and bring it up to approximately where it should go. All right, so we got our bracket again. You can pay attention to where you can see little circles on the bracket. That's where the washers on the bolts were. There's two of them. There's another one over there. You can see where the rectangle was. That's from the condenser. We're just gonna take this and slide it in this slot. We're going in the top slot, not the bottom. It's easy to make that mistake. Let's see if we can line this up. I'm just gonna start these in. I'm not gonna tighten them up yet because I need to be able to wiggle all this around to continue mounting in the other side. So now we get this, it's gonna hold this up. We can move over here. So I'm gonna use this bolt. I'm gonna get it started. I'm gonna try to get the lines that go to the bracket on the radiator with this bolt. So once I get this in and started, I'll show you where it actually is. It's hard to get my hand in here. So what I did is I started in this bolt right here with the 10 millimeter. It's just a 10 millimeter head. You might have to hold the radiator and the condenser, wiggle things around, try to get the two holes lined up. It's gonna be fun. It'll be interesting. There might be some cuss words involved, um, but you could do it. So we're just gonna get that in. Once we get it a few threads, we're gonna go ahead and start doing the other one. We don't wanna tighten anything up yet. We're gonna tighten everything up once we get to the end here. Next, I started in this 10 millimeter head bolt. Goes right in here. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna hold the lines to the radiator. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and start that in a few threads. Like I said before, I'm not gonna tighten anything yet. We wanna make sure everything can move around until we get everything so it's started. And then we can go ahead and tighten it down. So next we're gonna go ahead and put on these brackets. There's two of them. There's an upper and a lower. They're both the exact same. If you mixed them up on accident, don't worry. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts that go here, 10, 10 millimeter head bolts. And then this one right here, which I believe was a 12. We're gonna go ahead and start these in. And then we're gonna do the top bracket. We're gonna do the same thing, just starting them in, leave everything loose, and we'll move along. So we've got this upper bracket started. I've got the two 10 millimeter head bolts right there. As you can see, it's still nice and loose. I got my 12 over here. That screws into the radiator. Keep it nice and loose. We don't want it coming off, but we also don't want it too tight yet. We're gonna do the same for the bottom bracket. So the same thing I did on the top bracket, I did on the bottom. I put in this 12 millimeter head bolt, my two 10s. So now everything's all started in. I can go ahead and start tightening up the condenser to the radiator portion. So I'm just gonna get these in nice and snug by finger here. I'm gonna use my ratchet wrench or whatever you happen to have with a 10 millimeter turning to the right. It's hard to get to in that direction. I'll just come over here. We don't need to really reef on it, try to pull break anything here. This is all very sensitive equipment. Once it's snugged or it's bottomed out, just give it a little extra and that's it. We don't need a big long ratchet or anything like that and try to lift all the way out here. Too much leverage. Just come in close. That's that. So we got this one. We're going to come over here, tighten up all four of these tens. Then we're going to grab those twelves. Then we're going to come around the back side over here and finish these up. So I got all our tens in. I got all four tens nice and screwed in. I got our twelve screwed in. So the brackets are nice and tight, we can feel it. That's the whole radiator moving, just so you know. Because <laughs> all we did right now is basically just mount the condenser to the radiator. So I'm gonna tighten this one up using a 10 millimeter. We don't need to go too tight. There we go. We'll move on to our last bolt, which is right here. It's another 10 millimeter. So we can continue with the same tool if we want. Like I said before, we don't need to be, this is a nice long ratchet. We don't need to use that whole length whole uh, leverage of it. We just want to snug it up. All this is doing is it's securing the lines to the radiator. This is all nice and secured. Double check, make sure we got all the bolts. We don't have anything left over over here. All we've got is mounting bolts left. So we got our, we got our condenser connected to the radiator. It's in there nice. Next we're going to go inside here, being careful not to drag our arms too much up and down this. It'll cause scratches, gouges, cuts. We want to be very careful, and also we want to be careful of these fins on the radiator. Like I said before, we don't want to try to squish those down. If some of them do get squished down a little bit, don't cry about it. It should be all right. So we're going to lift this up, and let's see if I can get my arm out of the way to show you. There's a clip right here, and another one right here. Basically where the inside fan is going to sit is right inside those, and it's going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to carefully reach in here. I'm going to try to lift it up. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit. I'm going to do the same for the other side, hopefully. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. There we go. We'll just make sure that it is actually in there on the bottom and the top. I'm going to come over here. It's in on the top and the bottom. Perfect. There we are. Now we can take our little clip. This one right here. We're gonna put it so the long side faces down on the shroud. There's also a little tab on the shroud right there. It's hard to see, it's very small. That's gonna fit right inside that little slot. So if you happen to forget, that's where it goes. We're gonna try to pinch it together. Push that down. We want to remember that we took one of these off on the bottom, so we're going to go ahead and get under there. We're going to put on the other one for the bottom, and then we can go ahead and mount this on, and then we'll mount the radiator to the body. All right, so be careful for any drips that might come under here. We got our little clip. It's pretty much the same as the one that goes up top. We get the long end and the short end. The long end has a little tab hole, and this has a little tab sticking out. So we're going to go ahead, make sure that it's up against the radiator, Push that up and in, like that. While we're under here, if you wanted to, we can do this part, but we'll wait on that. 
We're gonna get it all mounted in and then we'll get this underneath when we're done. So we get our little clips. We're gonna go ahead and slide them into this groove right here. We wanna make sure that it's going in this direction because we're gonna be putting the bolt this way. You don't want it facing the opposite way. The bolt won't wanna go in that way. So we'll just slide it in, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other rear on the other side. All right, so here we go. We got our last little piece right here that we're gonna attach. So I'm gonna make sure that I have this ear right here setting down into this slot. I'm gonna make sure that this is out and not tucked in and underneath the back there because we need it out to connect to this. This ear is gonna go over here and there should be a bolt hole that's gonna connect right there. So I'm gonna lift it up, get it worked into where I believe it needs to go. I might need to give it a couple tries. We might even get this side in and then go over to the other side, start wiggling that around to get it in. We'll come back over and check this and we're gonna realize that we have to do it again. So we'll go over and do the same to the other side. We're just finding our little clip holes. We'll try to line it up. There we are, we'll get that lined up. Check my other side like I mentioned. It stayed in, nice. We got our bolts that we set aside so we wouldn't lose. I'm just gonna put that inside the hole right here. Very nice. We can go ahead and put in the other one. We can snug these right up. They don't have to be very tight. Okay, so I feel it so it's bottomed out. Just give it a little bit more. It feels good. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So I'm on the last bolt right here, over here. It feels pretty good. We'll just double check, make sure everything's in and settled in where it's supposed to go in the clips. If you have any of them out, it's gonna cause an issue. You could have your fan hitting up against your shroud. It's gonna cause noise going down the road. Could cause damage. This looks good. Perfect. So now we can put in these last two bolts, connect in our little wiring harness here, do a little hose action and we'll get back underneath. So here's our mounting bolt for the radiator. It's gonna go through this little donut that we put on there. Just like this, you can see it coming through. Line it up with the hole. We're not gonna tighten this down until we go ahead and put on the other one. But while we're over here, I'm gonna grab this connector. I can see where the lock is. I can see where the lock is on the other side. We can connect it right in, like that. We got a little mounting spot right here. Should just slide in, that feels great. Now I'm gonna go do the other bolt. Now that we have them both started, we can go ahead and tighten these down. You can use an air ratchet or whatever you might have. I'm just gonna go with this, because I get all the time in the world. Feels like it's getting close now. Yep, there we go. There we go. That feels good. Get the connector on there. Make sure this is nice and snug, feels good. Not going anywhere. We'll grab our hose, should match up right here still. Push that in. Now we can grab our little uh, hose pliers. Like I said before, you can use regular pliers if you want. I'm just gonna use these, this is what they're made for. And I like them because they lock. So I don't have to hold pliers and I can use two hands to do this. There we are. Now when we get this back on, we wanna pay special attention to where the grooves are. I don't know if you can see where the, the uh, clamp originally was, it's darker. You wanna to try to get this matched up exactly where it was before. Some people say it's not that big of a deal. Some people say it is a really big deal. Why not just do it if we can, right? Give it a little tug, that feels good along, that's in. This is the hose that leads to the overflow. We're just gonna put this on. Slide it on there, fits on good. Get any crud out of there. Now we're gonna go underneath and we'll finish up from under there. So same as with the other clamp, we wanna make sure that we have this going the same direction as when we took it off. So we remember that we had to come in from this side to do it, but what we may or may not remember is if it was this way or this way. So we'll just ask the hose, the hose knows. What we'll say. I can see there's two prongs on the bottom side and one thick one coming down from the center. So that tells me that this is the way that it was. It wasn't this way, right? 
is we have the two prongs on the bottom side this way. So we're gonna go this way. We're gonna go ahead and put it on our tool and then we'll put it on the hose. So we got it on our tool. We can bring it in here, grab our hose, slide it right over the hose. We'll get it all aligned in a second. Basically right now, while it's over the hose, we're gonna put the hose on the bottom area of the radiator, slide it all the way down till it connects with this nub. That means it's bottomed out. Now we can just finagle our clamp to where it originally was. Relieve pressure. Let's get it closer again. Looks like it needs to maybe slide just a scotch backward. Doesn't have to be perfect. Or maybe it does for you, I don't know. For me, close enough is close enough, but here we go. I'm just gonna try again, last time. Looks pretty good, give it a little pull. It's nice and tight. If for some reason it wasn't holding on and you can move the hose around quite a bit, you would just wanna replace this clamp, which isn't a big deal, you can get them anywhere. So now we're back underneath. We're gonna be paying attention for drips. Stuff's still dripping, so make sure you're wearing your safety glass. Glasses, sorry. We'll make sure that this is tight. This is your petcock, where the uh, coolant will come out of when you go to drain it. it. Feels tight. You can grab it with pliers if you want, but be careful not to over tighten it. I'm gonna go ahead and push in these three push clips. This is the one that came out. Just drive it up in here, hopefully. Let's see if I can get this one in. This one, there we are. So we got all that mounted in. We checked the pet cock. We made sure that clamp was on nice and snug. We're gonna clean all this down once we're done. All right, let's go back up top. So our next step for me would be checking uh, to make sure that this holds pressure. To do that, I'm gonna use a vacuum system. This also works for filling. It works great for filling actually. If you don't have access to something like this, which is just an airlift system, you can go ahead and get one of these tools, which we sell. It's a Lyle product. Buy it right here at 1aauto.com. This will help you fill it, and then you'll just have to run it and see if it has any leaks for me. If I have access to it, and I do, I'm just gonna go with this tool right here. Connect it in. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna watch for pressure. We got our little gauge system here. We want it to come up into the green. As you can see, it sucks down the hoses. That's normally nice and round and fluffy. I'm just gonna let it keep building until it stops building. Once it gets to that point, I'll cut off the air to it and I'll make sure that it holds pressure for a good five, maybe six, 10 minutes, whatever you wanna go with. If it does, then we can go ahead and fill it with the manufacturer's specified coolant. So I've been leaving this on here for a little while now. I got it pretty much holding still right there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the pressure like that. I can remove the air hose if I want. And now I'm just gonna leave this. Like I said, five, six, 10 minutes, whatever you wanna do. See if it goes down. It might go down a scotch, that's okay. But if it starts going down yellow, God forbid red, that means we have an issue. The issues could be a leaky hose, a crack someplace on the radiator, maybe during installation or shipping. Um, anything's possible. So we just wanna make sure that it holds pressure. The way that you would check to see if it holds pressure without having this tool, you have your little tool right here. You're gonna fill up the system. You're gonna run it, burp out all the air that you can, close it up with the radiator cap, and then just run it. And then just basically just look for a leak after it's been running for a while and it builds up pressure. This way to me seems like it makes a little bit more sense. We can use this to fill it in the end. We're gonna run it and everything, so we'll put this all in, put a little bit of coolant in there, let it burp through, but we'll let this sit. All right, so as you can tell, it's still holding pressure exactly where we left it. I left it like this for a while now because I went and found some coolant. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we use coolant that's either 50-50 pre-diluted or you wanna make sure that you dilute it 50-50. So if you have concentrate, you want it to be 50% concentrate 50% water, essentially. Um, so basically this is already pre-diluted, so that means that we don't have to do anything with it. This also says for all makes and models to add to any color antifreeze. So if you get one that says 50-50 green, 
That's not gonna work in this vehicle. You get one that says 50-50, I don't know, purple, green, whatever. It might not work in this vehicle. We just went with this because it works for anything, but it has to be 50-50. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and add to it. The way I'm gonna do it is because I'm using this airlift system. I love it. Oh, I'm gonna take off this right here. Obviously, we're not gonna get much cooling out with that in there. I'm just gonna put it in. I'm gonna turn my little crank here. Now you can see that the pressure is kind of going. And the way that this is happening is it's, I created a vacuum. So now the vacuum is sucking coolant from inside here up into the radiator through the cooling system. When you feel like it's getting a little low, which it almost kind of feels like it's getting a little low, I'm wearing safety glasses, so that's why I have it this close to my face. I'm gonna stop it before it goes empty because I wanna try to keep coolant inside this hose. If you get a little bit of air, that's okay. You get a lot of air, well, you just put air inside your cooling system. So you might as well just use the funnel. I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. And keep it going. I like to hold it up like this. You can put it down if you want for me. Seems like gravity works a little bit better this way. So we're getting low on vacuum. Still feels like there's plenty of coolant in here. So we'll just wait till that gets down either to zero or pretty much at zero. At this point, you definitely want to have the jug up higher because if you have it down low, there won't be enough suction to suck it up because of gravity. Okay, that seems pretty good. I'm just gonna pinch this off. I'll remove my tool. Relieve pressure. That lets the coolant go back into the bucket. We have very minimal mess here, that's great. So our handy kit came with all sorts of adapters, but I found the couple that I'm gonna use. Just like this, I'm gonna use the black adapter in this. The reason why I'm using this is because it has this size right here, fits perfectly into the hole into the radiator. That feels nice. Then I'm gonna take the cap, I'm gonna go ahead and screw it right on here. It goes on nice and snug. I can't wiggle this around. If I could take this and go, woo, I'd have the wrong adapter. Next we have our little stopper, so we can remove that if we want. Put it right here. Now we can fill this up with some coolant. We're gonna continue with the 50-50 coolant that we were using. I'll finish off this jug and then I'll grab another jug. Once again, I'm wearing my safety glasses. As this is bubbling, it could spit a little bit up into my face. Safety first. I like to just squeeze the upper radiator hose a little bit. This just kind of helps push out any air that might be sitting in the top of the radiator there somewhere. See, as you can tell, I'm burping it out. This is helping it along. If you go ahead and you go really fast, you're gonna aerate the system. You're gonna have a lot of little air bubbles in there. We wanna try to keep big air bubbles. Big air bubbles come out a lot easier than a whole bunch of little ones. I'm just gonna put this up to here. We could even bring it up a little higher. You don't need to go too high though, but you do wanna pay attention to the level because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna keep burping it. I'm gonna burp more air out. It's gonna suck more fluid down. Once it gets down here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we fill it up, right? We don't wanna be sucking more air back in there. We could do this a bunch more times or we can just stop where we're at now. We can fill this back up to approximately here and run the vehicle till it gets hot. That'll help burp, burp out any other fluid that's inside the system and then we can finish up with whatever fluid's left. We'll dispose of it properly. So while we got this sitting, hanging out, waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and put on this plastic shroud right here. See if we could figure out how it goes back on. Everything should kind of line up the way that it was. Let's see. We've got one right here. This is gonna go into this hole, so that'll give us a start of where we're going. Go ahead and put it down. We'll just kind of line everything up now as we go along. We should line up going along the line here. There we are. If it doesn't seem like it wants to line up, maybe this thing's a little crooked, you can take a peek underneath. Right here, this goes in this hole. If you have it off to the side or maybe you pulled on it too much or you tweaked it, it's not lining up. Ah, just line it up, man. Or woman, person, whoever you are. You could bonk it. Sometimes it feels good to bonk it. that in there. Okay, just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we got all those down. All right, everybody. So we've ran this for a little while now. We have to be careful. Everything's a little warm. The hoses are gonna be hot. All right, we got the majority of the air out of here. 
We're hoping that we've got it all out. It's quite possible that there's maybe a little bit left in there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna move forward, okay? For the purpose of this video, I wanna continue. I wanna show you that this is your coolant reservoir area right here. So basically, when your coolant heats up, it expands. It's gonna come through this hose right here, which is the top of the radiator. Your radiator cap's gonna let the little spring come up. It's gonna let fluid come through this, go into this overflow. It'll also let fluid go from the overflow to the radiator if this for some reason went low. So basically when the fluid expand, ex sorry, expands, it comes through, goes to the overflow, cools back down, it's gonna start condensing back down. It's gonna suck a little bit of fluid from here back into the radiator, okay? So we're gonna carefully open this up. It's not under pressure or anything like that, but you should always wear safety glasses. It's very important, okay? Safety is key. Lift this, We've got a little doodad here. We'll pull it out, we can take a look. Looks a little dirty. I'm just gonna clean it off. So hopefully we can see the levels on this. Okay. Maybe if I hold it kind of close to the black, I don't know if you can see it better that way or maybe up closer, what's best for you, I don't know. Right here I can see maximum, M-A-X. Down here, minimum, okay? So we want it to be somewhere in between here. We don't need it to be all the way up here because if we fill it up to here when it's cold, when this expands, it's gonna come up, 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 and God forbid, it's gonna come up and out here and onto the ground, in which case we're polluting the environment and that's very bad, okay? So now that I clean this off, I'm gonna put it back in, I'm gonna check our level. Put it down, lift it up, okay? I can see it looks like it's wet about up to here. There's no water, or, um, sorry, coolant inside this hole. There is up there. Looks like it's wet pretty much up to here. So here's our maximum, down there's our minimum. So if we wanted to, we could try to bring it up to maybe here. Or I mean, I guess if you want to, you can go to the max, but preferably let's just go here. So what I'm gonna do, I still have a little bit of coolant left inside my reservoir container here. After burping it all out, I'm just gonna squeeze on the radiator hose, give it a little bit, and put this in. That's gonna plug it, all right? Now I can go ahead and lift this. Nothing's leaking out, just a little drip, that's okay. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna put all this wonderful coolant right in there. I'll just stop it real quick, because I don't know how fast it's filling that up. We'll check it. Okay, looks like it came up another hole, two holes. Looks like I'm right up to where I wanna be. So what are we gonna do with the rest of this coolant? We're not gonna put it down the drain or into the ground. We'll put it right back in our coolant bucket, okay? So I'll close this up. I'll be clear to take off the rest of this. Put my cap back on in one second. I'm just gonna dispose of this properly and then we'll put the cap on and we'll be all set. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.